This, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight won. Come on, this is not a joke. This is not a joke. Moonlight has won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. Hey guys, I'm back on my bed, so you know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a movie marathon. Today, I'm going to be watching all of the Oscar 2021 Best Picture nominees so you don't have to. Now, before we get into it, I've already watched three of the Best Picture nominees. I've watched Promising Young Woman, which is out on my channel right now. I've watched Minari, which I watched with friends, and then I watched The Trials of the Chicago 7, which I watched with my boyfriend. So I've watched those three. I have not seen the rest, but today we're gonna watch all the Best Picture nominees of the Oscars 2021. Frankie? What is? It's an astro to fly catcher. Congratulations, best kind. What's bothering you then? You're not going to like this, Austin. I'm on credit. Netflix International Pictures presents Gary Oldman and Mang. I'm not a Gary Oldman fan. I'm really not. I'm really not about Gary Oldman. I don't support him at all. Directed by David Fincher. I feel like people who say David Fincher is their favorite director are kind of like, like only know who David Fincher is. Not saying that I'm very well versed on directors, but I feel like people who say their favorite is David Fincher just kind of say that because that's the only name they remember. It's a call out. It's definitely, it, I'm calling everyone out right now. It's to do it in five for you with the mercury. This is leisurely. 60 days and then we can noodle. Oh my Nothing God, like a good so dramatic. I feel like stories about like filmmaking are like so meta, <laughs> like I'm over it. <laughs> so the, the, the stakes are that he has 60 days to write a screenplay and finish it instead of 90 days. Boo! You can't keep me in a film with just Lily Collins and Amanda. You really can't. You need to raise up the stakes because although I'm a whore for both of them, I need some more. I need some more oomph. I gotta say I'm not that invested in the main character of this film, Mank. I don't really see why I should be invested in this character. Well, let's hope it makes more sense than the last fighters of the decks of aircraft carriers. The way I just, I'm idea. hearing That's gibberish it? right now. Mm -hmm. Billy Collins said, David Fincher, I'm done on this set. Like, I have to go. Like, I'm just, like, so bored. <laughs> I love rooms like this because it reminds me of, like, the Haunted Mansion or, like, Tower of Terror. You know? Like, it makes me think of, like, a old, old spooky house. And I kind of love that. I love the aesthetic of this movie. I think it's serving. I think it's serving, it's giving me a lot with the aesthetic and like all that kind of like vibe. But the story is fucking boring. The story is quite boring, so I cannot get into it. And I really wish I could. I really wish I could. Amanda, they got Lily, and they're just giving me nothing with them. Y'all, we still got an hour and a half left. I'm sleep. I am sleep, dude. Meaning, you can make the world swear if King Kong is ten stars tall and Mary Pickford a virgin of forty. Yet you can't convince starving voters that a turncoat socialist is a menace to everything Californians hold oh dear. Y'all barely try. Okay, that was, was kind of a serve. It was kind of a serve. Good for you. Go King. Like that was like kind of a serve, you know? Like damn bitch, you can convince everyone that King Kong is 10 foot tall, but you can't convince someone that a socialist is bad. You must suck. You must be really bad. Like you must be a loser if you can't do that. That's embarrassing. So embarrassing. None of the theater chains will touch us. It looks like RKO will have to sue for restraint of trade. They'll count us of course. Dude, I feel like I've been watching this for five hours. Like, I usually love biopics. Like, biopics are some of my favorite things ever. This is like such a drag. The only thing I wish that was written better was that like it made me care. Like, I don't care about Mank. I don't care about any of these people. What's bothering you then? You're not going to like this, Oh, I'm on credit. If someone wants credit, they should get the credit. Like if this is what the ending thing is, like the climactic thing of like him writing Citizen Kane 
and then like them not wanting to give him credit and then he stands up to get credit Ugh, boring and a handsome red fez with a silk I don't need any more walking monologues. I don't need any more walking stories and metaphors and explained. I want to watch a story. I don't want to watch people say stories for two hours. Oh. Uh, that movie felt like it was 10 days long. No disrespect to Mank. No disrespect to Herman Man Mankiewicz. No disrespect to Citizen Kane. This movie was a bore. I would not watch this movie again. I wouldn't recommend it to people. Um, Mank is a visually stunning film and it truly transports you to 1930s Hollywood. To me, it was a boring movie that created no emotional connection to the characters in the story. Great performances done by each member of the cast, but it is such a drag to watch. It felt like it was five hours long. I could not get into it. I would give this two and a half stars. It just wasn't my thing, sorry. I don't think this would win Best Picture, if I'm being honest, because it's kind of boring, but maybe that just means it will win Best Picture because it's so boring. Some of the most boring movies win Best Picture. Get a ticket to ride. Find a big fat lady with two or three kids to sit down by her side. I don't ever say a final goodbye. Till the sun comes up and down Let's just say I'll, I'll see you down the road. And I do. Smoking cigarettes in the last seat. Trying to hide my sorrow from the people I meet and get along with it all. Everyone says this is gonna win, so. I'm sitting down watching these like I am a movie critic. So. I'm just here to watch these movies so you don't have to. On January 31st, 2011, due to reduced demand for sheetrock, US shut down its plant in Empire, Nevada after 88 years. By July, the Empire zip code 89405 was discontinued. Oh no. Amazon. Can I get a standard work tip from you? Oh, I love that she just did that. She went. <laughs> she went <laughs> Good for you. I love her. Kind of love her already. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Just a couple of gals messing with each other at work. I love that. Just goofing off. I feel like this is giving me very similar vibes to um, Minari. It seems. Like, it's a very humane movie for some reason. I don't know. I feel like the characters just seem very human. Whereas, like, when I watched Mank, I just, they were anything but human. It's the magic bus. We could go to Hawaii. Mm -mm. That's so oh cute. <laughs> you better not convince me to get a van. You better not convince me to get an RV by the end of this movie. Careful, oh. I just read something that said that a lot of the people that were in this movie weren't actually poor and actual nomads and actual Amazon workers. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that seems kind of weird that this lead actress, this Oscar award winning actress was just like, with them just being like I i'm like y'all makes me question these movies is who are you making this movie for are you making it for the people that actually live this life or are you making it for the people that have no idea what it's like to live this life to feel like they are doing some sort of justice by watching it, the movie that was beautiful look at those feathers Oh. That was, you're fucked up for that one. You you showed all these birds and then you switched to a turkey or chicken. Corn. Cooked. You're wrong for that one. You're wrong for that transition, I'll tell you that. It gives me a reason to go through the day. <laughs> Some days that's all I've got. And out here, there's a lot of people our age and inevitably there's grief and loss. And a lot of them don't get over it either. And that's okay. See, I think these parts where they actually start talking, they have a lot of dialogue. The monologues, I think, are probably like 
why this movie is worth watching. I think like a lot of the other parts can be really slow and a little bit of a drag, if you will, if you're not used to watching slow movies, which I'm not. Um, I think those little monologues are actually really powerful and really wonderful, and I, I do love them. I love the idea that some people don't get over their grief, and that's completely okay. That's okay. I've seen that same side of her face a million times in this movie. They love giving her a shot like that, where she just looks off into the distance. They really make Frances carry every movie she's in. They just give her the script and they say, carry it. Mm, I would give that one like, a three and a half stars three and a half stars technically good technically good per bringing in my own personal taste to it that's where i kind of lean back on it's you know a bit of a this is life story this is human we are human type of story but this is it very much draws some similarities to Minari. Um, I really liked Minari. Um, I liked Minari more than Nomadland. Um, for me, I had a lot more personal bias in it, not just because it was Asian, but it was a story that I could relate to so much more. Not saying that I am an immigrant, I'm like fifth generation Chinese American, so I don't relate to that, but a lot of the things that were shown in the movie I related to, and I really loved the characters in it, and I fell in love with the family, and I, I liked Minari a lot more than Nomadland, but that's a personal taste too. Had a little bit more dialogue, a little bit more of a story and um, almost a um, want storyline. I didn't see much of a I want in the beginning. So, you know, usually when you have a protagonist, you kind of go for, you know, this is what the character wants. This is what they're going to get. These are the risks that it's going to take to, these are the risks that are at stake. Fern didn't have that many wants. She was grieving. And um, I think that's why it, you know, doesn't really sit with me. I haven't dealt with grief in my life like that. So um, it's harder for me to relate to. And also I just have a personal taste difference, but no Man Land portrays a very humane story that feels so real while watching it. I think Francis and the dialogue combined were really the strongest parts of this film. It's a very humane story that feels so real while watching it. My only problem is that to achieve that rawness for the film, they used actual nomads and Amazon employees. The kicker about this is that the actual nomad slash actors did not know that Frances was an Academy Award winning actress and that she was very, very wealthy. Using actual nomads and profiting off of their poverty is an unethical practice in my opinion. I personally don't like how the story makes poverty seem like a more grounded raw way of living life and doesn't showcase the very big flaws of capitalism. We see the grief that Fern goes through but we don't open the audience's eye to the massive flaws within capitalism that is so prevalent in today's society. It's a three and a half stars for me. It's a wonderful film to watch. It's great writing but I have a little bit of problems with the behind the scenes. <laughs> sexy sorry this is how intense i thought like freaky friday lindsay lohan's band was you know like i thought they were this intense i was like wow they're kind of like they're kind of emo that made me want to throw up the build up from the music to completely silence made me want to throw up i did not like that <laughs> made me feel disgusting Together. rv movies have their own genre Together. right they're very cute together. There's literally so many RV movies in the Oscar 2021 nominees for Best Picture. Nomadland, Sound of Metal, Minari. 
That's it. Oh my god, this is like... This is freaky, because it sounds like so realistic to when your like ears are like clogged or you have like water in them or like something in them i don't know what you guys are sticking in your ears but oh my god and they showed him making the breakfast earlier to emphasize the sound that they were creating and now we can't hear the simplest tap of the coffee dripping it'll start with just your right ear This is weird. I thought they were gonna do the thing where they only put it through my right ear. Like if you're wearing headphones, it's like a whole different experience, but they didn't. Still going to miss 70 to 80% of the words that I said. Okay. That is not good. He said, that is not good. Yeah, no shit, bitch. Or even hours, it's going to continue. And the hearing that you have lost is not coming back. Doc, you gotta get a better way of telling people bad news because you are not doing a very good job. You're very uncomforting. He's literally just like, it's not coming back. Sorry. Like, be a little bit nicer about it. Jeez, bitch. Oh, you're gonna make me like, they keep snapping back and forth and it's like kind of making me go insane because they build up this like, you know, muffled sound and I get used to the muffled sound and the muffled like audio and then you snap it back into clear and I'm like, she's really making him drive. <laughs> Why is that funny? Like, it's not because I'm like, oh my God, he can't hear and she's making him drive. Just like, cause I guess he's going through like a lot emotionally right now. And she's like, you drive. <laughs> Ruben, you hurt yourself. You hurt me. I'll hurt myself too. I'll hurt myself too. It. Say it, Ruby, or all of this is for shit. Say it. I don't like that. That was very not good for me to hear. I don't like the idea of you hurt yourself, I hurt myself. That's been used against me, and I don't like it seeing it in movies and it's like a, such a grand thing of like, oh my god, like we love each other this much. If you hurt yourself, I hurt myself. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Best lead actor type thing because like I'm really feeling it I'm really feeling that best best actor oh. best lead actor who gave him an old-fashioned cake donut oh is that how he likes to eat them or what that was an interesting sequence he smashed the old-fashioned cake donut pushed it back together and it smashed it again Okay, best, best, best actor type things. Like he's, not just because he's screaming, but I'm just like, this is such a hard role to play and I feel like he's doing it so well. I like this. I really like this movie, I think. Oh my cry. Wait, I'm like really liking this movie. I'm just really intrigued by the story. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is such a good, this is such a good thing. And I love it that they're not adding like music or whatever to like mute out whatever noise that they're making. Like, I really like that they're leaving it how it is and kind of just letting it be the scene, you know? Excuse me. Why would you show me that so up close? Literally, why would you do that to me? I thought it was gonna be like a will he or will he not situation at the end. I can, I can totally pay you back. Why don't you... Why don't you ask Lou? Seriously, my girlfriend's dad is rich. Give me the, give me the money. Then why don't you ask your girlfriend? Why don't you call her up? This guy's damaged. Three or four weeks. Delay. Activate. Everybody here shares in the belief that being deaf is not a handicap, not something to fix. There are too many others to consider. I'm gonna have to ask you to pack up your bags today and find another place to be, Ruben. <sighs> this movie, y'all, I'm like, it's hitting me right in my heart, right where it wants to. I'm like, fuck. All I have to say is the plan was very stupid. The plan was built on nothing, might I add. It was an impulsive decision and I get where it comes from, but also it was a very, very dumb plan. 
You gotta love a scene where someone shaves off their hair. Doesn't everyone love that scene? It's like, oh, the character shaved off their hair, or they cut their hair. Are you ready? If it doesn't work, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. Okay. That sounds like Sprite. Just take your time. Surely you would have told this to him before you did the surgery and he paid you. Surely you would tell someone and tell someone like the actual realities of getting cochlear implants before the surgery happens. That it's not gonna, especially if they are, if they lost their hearing and they weren't born with hearing issues. Um, surely you would tell someone that it would sound very different. I have a bone to pick with a doctor. I feel like she should have told him that the realities of what it would sound like. I do really like it that they're actually putting in what it would sound like to him. I really do like that they're adding that in. I don't know if it's accurate. I don't know if this is actually an accurate portrayal. I'm sure there's it's a it differs from person to person depending on their case. And he's finally sitting in stillness. I love that. I really love that. I love that movie. I don't know, I really love stories like this. I really love seeing all these. It just really penetrated my heart like that, which I really wasn't expecting from The Sound of Metal. I think from the cover, it just kind of seemed misleading. I didn't find that much interest to it. I think my mind just like immediately casted it off, but I really love this movie. Like, and it was probably one of the movies that I was expecting to like the least. Did I loved seeing his journey throughout this film. Um, and I don't know if it is actually accurate to uh, an accurate portrayal of the deaf community. Um, I, I loved the character building. I thought it was a really good story to build on. But by far, this is my top pick at the moment. I thought it was so good. I loved Riz Ahmed's performance. Paul Rachey as Joe, amazing job. I think like he just, I don't know. I loved him as a mentor. I thought it was actually a really good revival of the mentor character in a lot of movies and TV shows. I think we kind of see so many mentor characters in so many different pieces of fiction that we get tired of the same old things. And although he plays into the same old things, I think Paul Rishi himself brings a lot to the character that kind of sets it apart from the other ones. Final ending of him sitting in stillness just hit so much harder. It really hit like amazing. I think that they set that up perfectly and it landed perfectly with me. And I think that's why this film, I'm going to give a five out of five because I loved it. I thought I loved it how they put you in the film. I think watching this in a theater would have been an even better experience than just watching it through my laptop. I'm glad I watched it with headphones in. I think that if you are going to watch it, if you haven't watched it and you are going to watch it, I think watching it with headphones in is a must to really submerge yourself into the experience. Sound of Metal is one of my favorite movies of the day. I would recommend it and I would watch it again. It's a story that's filled with so much heart and I loved watching Ruben's journey and his final transition to accepting stillness. I think the setup for the final scene created such a wonderful landing with him accepting stillness. Riz played the role so well. It's an incredibly difficult world to play and I think he did it with so much passion that it just created such a connection between the audience and his character. I would give this movie a vibe out of five and I would watch it again and again and it's gonna stay in my top movies for a while. I have all my thoughts about Promising Young Woman on my channel right now. There's a commentary video for the full movie on my channel right now, so go check that out. But my thoughts on whether it will win an Oscar or not is debatable because why would they give an Oscar to a movie about rape when half the people in the audience have rape allegations against them? Oh, no.
I feel as if I'm, I feel as if I'm losing all my leaves. Your leaves? What do you mean? Uh, you're going to feel all right in a minute. I promise you. Everything will be all right. You will not catch me listening to opera in my free time. It's too dramatic and too cinematic for people to kill me to. You know what I mean? Like, I never want to put on the soundtrack myself for someone to kill me to. You know what I mean? If I'm playing something like opera, that seems way too cinematic for someone to hop on in and take the opportunity to kill me. And this is how my mind works sometimes. Yeah, maybe I think that I'm setting up a soundtrack and a score for someone to kill me to. But is that such a weird thing to think, you know? Aren't you, uh, separated? Who? And me. Yes, you aren't? N no. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. You guys are freaking me out. You're putting me through the unreliable narrator, the dad. You're putting me through his eyes, and now I'm confused. I, I got divorced more than five years ago, you remember? I don't remember. I'm literally getting so upset right now. I'm so upset. Sorry, dear. I may as well tell you now. I'm not leaving this flat anytime soon. I'm going to outlive you. That sounds like such a threat. He's like, you're gonna die before me, bitch. Like, what a weird thing to say. I'm gonna outlive you, bitch. Fuck you. Have you looked in your cupboard? I've just come from there. It's not there. Must have lost it somewhere. Or else it's been stolen. No, it hasn't. What do you mean, no, it hasn't? Which must be something I can't have flown away. Do you want me to go and have a look? There's very much so, because this is a bother. I am worried, though. It's very worrying. I mean, I'm losing all my things. Everyone's just helping themselves. And uh, this goes on much longer. I'll, um, I'll be stark naked. And um, I, uh, I won't be able to tell what time it is. Please. Dude, I don't I know think. what time it is. I don't know the timeline. I don't know where the timeline is. And I don't know who anyone is. You know, it's pretty. You know, watch it. It's, um, it's very pretty. Is, uh... is it gonna be like the episode of spongebob where he's like you ate my chocolate and he's like no you ate your chocolate and he's like no i see you have the chocolate right there and he's like no this is mine he's like no you stole mine that one's mine dad what are you doing standing out there come come and sit down come on dad dad come in sit down you're upsetting me you're very much upsetting me with this movie I didn't think this movie would upset me this much. It's making me um, upset. Honestly, I was expecting this movie to be very boring and it's kind of giving me more than I anticipated. Cause I was like, mm, dementia father, blah, we've seen the story from the struggling um, kid's perspective. I think it's very interesting to put it through his perspective and confuse the audience with a untrustworthy narrator. I have a memory like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was good. That was really good. Mm. Park? Oh, God. It's a nice day. Everything all right? No. Who is that? Ruining your daughter's life, or is it too much to hope you might behave reasonably? Oh, my God. This the is. The foreseeable future. No. What are you talking Stop. about? That? About you. Actually. Stop. About you. <gasps> your attitude. Stop that. Oh. I won't allow this. You won't allow it? No. Suppose I do it again. Then what will you do? Oh no. I... Oh no. Yeah? No. You'll have to take me on. Getting on everybody's tits. Past a certain age. No, no. Stop. 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 Yeah, I won't put up with that. I find that totally... No, stop. Stop it. Stop, stop. it. <laughs> stop hitting him. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't stop being a... Stop being a dick to him and maybe he won't be so scared by you. Stop. No, this is really... My heart... No, it was just... It's 8 o'clock, time to eat. I thought it was the morning. No, don't tell me he's gonna be in the hospital now. Don't tell... No. No, oh, no, 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 no. Y'all, I'm I I was not prepared for this movie at all. I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be boring. And this has been 
fucking crazier than I expected. Dad, what are you talking about? Say hello to Laura. There's something that doesn't make sense about this. Oh no, oh no. It doesn't make sense. Remember me? We met yesterday. I hate that. Like, it all starts to kind of make sense and then it switches on him. Oh. I think the cinematography is... I mean... Damn, they really, they really did some tricks on tips and tricks. They, they, they played me. Everything all right? Fine, we were just getting dressed. You're the evil man. Everything You're right? the scary one. I feel as if I'm losing all my leaves. Your leaves? Yeah. What do you mean? Yo, fuck oh, this movie. The branches and the wind and the rain. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck this movie. I hate this movie. I don't know movie. what's happening anymore. I'm never putting myself through this movie again. Do you know what's happening? Don't put- I'm never watching this movie again. Fuck this movie. It's- it's putting me through too much and I can't deal with it. Dude, I- I can't- I can't sit through this movie again. It's too- it's really way too much for me. The trees and all the leaves. Yo, fuck I'm this movie. All I can, I can say it with my whole chest. Literally, fuck this movie. Cause like, it's just. And then if you're feeling on good form, we can go for another little walk in the park. It's just so much just grief and confusion and hurt over and over again. And it's focusing on the trees because he said he's lost all his leaves. Fuck you. It's just, fuck you. Like, I literally, like, fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. I don't even know what to say. First of all, I did not expect that to be so good. I really thought it was going to be a bore, and it came out of left field that it was going to be through the perspective of An Antony. I didn't expect it to be through his perspective. Even I watched the trailer before this and I was like, I don't really think this is gonna be a film for me. And it just completely shocked me, like really going up on my list for the nominees. You know, stunning visual, stunning transition, stunning order and, you know, st stunning writing that just led me through a maze throughout the movie, you know, and amazing acting by the cast. I did not expect this to be so high on my list, but I would give this like a four out of five. That was really good. I like The Father and that was a huge surprise to me. It had a wonderful, gorgeous storytelling through the lens. It used the camera to confuse and distort the audience along with Antony. It's a story filled with grief, sadness, and confusion. The cast did a wonderful job conveying that message to the film. I think Anthony Hopkins f made you care so much about Anthony, and I think Olivia Coleman really supported him in this role. Four to five stars, unexpectedly amazing, would recommend. I watched Minari a few weeks ago and I really liked it. Although it was a slow movie and it didn't have much of a climactic scene or ending. I watched Minari a few weeks ago and I really loved it. Even though it was a slower movie and it didn't have a very climactic ending, I really loved the commentary on immigration and poverty in America. I connected to a lot of the parts they portrayed about Asian culture and Asian families in the movie and I just loved seeing that. It's a five out of five for me. It was a beautiful, beautiful movie with everything that I wanted. I loved it so much. It was a bit slow, but other than that, I thought it was a great movie. It was visually stunning, the acting was superb, and the soundtrack was just beautiful. And here it is, our final night At one point for me, he was like a role model. Me and the Black Panther Party don't believe in no culture, same revolutionary culture. What we mean by that is a culture that will free you. It's not a question of violence or non-violence, it's a question of resistance to fascism or non-existence within fascism. Brad's dead, man. No goddamn panther. You sure about that? The Intercommunal Institute and Liberation Schools 
free legal aid education for the community. The Black Panthers are the single greatest threat to our national security. The fact that they were literally just saying like, we're building a community that gives people what they need. And they were like, they're a threat. Special Agent Mitchell, FBI. Honestly, anyone could just tell me that they're FBI and I'd be like, yeah. Like, I really don't think I would check. Or like, actually look at it and be like, oh my God, really? Reform is just the masses teaching the slaves how to be better slaves. Under reform, you can take the motherfucking masses out and the slaves still be doing all the work for them. Daniel, he's such a good actor. I I'm just saying that from his accent alone, the way he can flip an accent. I've seen him do it all, man. He's really good. The Panthers and the Klan are one and the same. Their aim is to sow hatred and inspire terror. I I'm all for civil rights, but you can't cheat your way to equality. But the thing is, you say you can't shoot your way to equality. You can't cheat your way to equality. You can't shoot your way to equality. Then how did white people and Europeans shoot their way and cheat their way to supremacy and to oppress others? You know what I mean? Like, don't act like white people got all this just because they were playing fair and they were so gracious and they were not cheating their way through every system and exploiting everyone else around them and stomping on everyone else to get where they wanted to. Love the people. Love the people. So if you asked to make a commitment at age 20, you said I'm too young to die and y'all dead already. If you're there to struggle, you're there to win. If you're there not struggle, then God damn it, you don't deserve to win. I will say Daniel's doing Mm. He might win Best Actor too. Why do I feel like Best Actor is like a really hard competition this this year? Because I'm watching all these performances and I'm like, wow, wow, like these are all really good. Wait, but I don't know if Daniel is lead actor or if Lakeith was. But neither of them were nominated for Best Actor and I feel like that's wrong. I feel like that's wrong. It's not right. Gary Oldman should not be nominated for Best Actor. Daniel or Lakeith should be. I'm ready to die for the people, Chair. How about you? Is it a goddamn revolution or what? What are we doing this shit Get this for? shit the fuck out of here, you fucking idiot! I heard his accent slip through. I definitely heard his British accent slip through. I heard it. Oh, that was his plan oh, to create a f wait. I can't tell if that was his plan to like create a rift and a fight between them to like make an exit without like making an exit or if that was like really his plan. That was really his plan. Okay. Okay. Oscar worthy. He needs an Oscar right now. He needs an Oscar right now. If he doesn't get one. If he doesn't get one. I don't know what I'm going to do. Good. Looks like he's gonna make it. He's good and dead now. I'm, I'm, I'm not crying. I'm tearing up. But like, I'm not trying to like be like crybaby about it. But I just, I, I don't know. I'm left speechless. Like, I don't know what to say because it's like, believe. I, I cannot stand that people don't believe that the system that was in place back then is still majorly impacting black people today. Ninety-nine shots. The Black Panthers fired one. Nevertheless, the seven survivors faced numerous charges, including attempted murder. Yo, I just, I, 99, 99. 12 years and it went down to 1.8 million? It should have stayed fucking 50. It should have fucking rounded up 50 million. Jeez. But literally no amount of money is gonna avenge the people that died. I 
I don't I don't even know what to say. Like literally nothing that I say is really going to like as a commentary on what happened and the actual true events that happened. Like I don't have anything that's going to be near what is right to say. It's insane. He was murdered in his sleep. There was 99 shots fired. Black Panther Party shot one shot and they were still charged with numerous I, I just fucking I think it was good that they kind of did it from William O'Neill's perspective um not that they knew his perspective but to kind of shoot it through that point of view while also giving some light onto Fred Hampton's perspective as well I think that was a, a nice contrast within the story even though you know you know it was hard to tell like who was the main but I feel like it was Lakeith because it ended on him it started with him um you know I would give it like a four mm, I would give it like a four and a half out of five, maybe five out of five. I would I would kind of go in between there. I wanted to end up uh, end on Judas and the Black Messiah because I thought it was going to be the best. Um, and I I think it is definitely one of the best. My favorites were Judas and the Black Messiah, Sound of Metal, and Minari. I gotta give it to those three. I I really love them. I think they're all really strong competitors. I don't think Minari's gonna win at all. Parasite won last year and due to Oscar politics, it's just not gonna win just because you can't have two Asian films win two two years in a row. It's just not possible. Usually if you watch the Oscars, you can kind of have a feeling of who's gonna win um, Best Picture um, due to if, you know, you can kind of eliminate because they usually spread out their wins. Usually they don't do Oscar sweep unless it was last year with Parasite, but um, it's, it's, it's rare if they do an Oscar sweep. Judas and the Black Messiah is a film that came through the screen like a punch. The cast and their performances cut so deep through every scene. I cannot praise them enough for their performances in this film. The pace of the film kind of slows down in the second act, but picks up to create an enjoyable pace later on and makes the ending scene very climactic. It had powerful and strong dialogue and no technical mishaps that distract from the story being told, which I think is so important while telling a story like this one. I would give this four and a half to five stars. I think Judas and the Black Messiah has a really good chance of winning, um, but it might be too political for the Academy to, you know, give it a win. Um, a lot of people say Nomadland was, is gonna win. I didn't like Nomadland for it to win. Um, I don't think The Sound of Metal is gonna win. I don't know, I just have a feeling about it. I just, um, it was my favorite film that I watched today just because I, I just, I just had a really strong liking towards the story and everything and it was something that I hadn't really seen before so I really loved it. I don't know, it doesn't give off best picture vibes and not be, that's not me saying it's not a good film because some some movies are best picture vibes and they are not good um, but I feel like Nomadland has best picture vibes just because it's like kind of boring. If Mank wins, I'm losing all shit. I'm literally gonna kill myself if Mank wins. I just thought that was so bad. Like now looking back on all the movies I watched, like after Sound of Metal and The Father and Judas and the Black Messiah, like literally like Mank better not win. I don't think Promising Young Woman is gonna win. And I don't think Trials of Chicago 7 is gonna win. As you know, my predictions, I feel like it's between Nomadland and The Black Messiah. I personally didn't like Nomadland that much after watching Sound of Metal and Judas and the Black Messiah and The Father. I actually really liked The Father much more than I expected, um, but I don't think The Father's gonna win Best Picture. It doesn't just get, it just doesn't give off that vibe. Promising Young Woman's not gonna win. It's too controversial, especially for Academy Awards where half the people they're nominating have sexual assault allegations. They're just not gonna let it win. Like you can't, it's the fact that it's even nominated is, is kind of crazy to me because half the, like literally half the nominees are probably have sexual assault allegations against them. So, you know, whatever, you know, Gary Oldman's up there and I know he has allegations against him. Um, I watched all the best picture nominees for the Oscars 2021. I think it's the 93rd Oscars. Actually, I have no idea, but I watch all of them. I watched all the best picture nominees of 2021 so you don't have to that was my video i hope you guys liked it um i know this was something different but i really wanted to sit down and watch all the oscar nominated films and you know why not do it for you guys and have you join me along the way and do something a little bit different and something that is going to take me hours and hours to edit that's it for today guys i am so tired i started filming at 12 and it is 11 I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.